Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of the Anything Wrestling Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we have a very special episode planned for you guys today. Uh, we want to talk about one of the most respected veterans of the WWE, uh, well, respected giants of the WWE. Uh, we want to kind of give a retro uh, perspective of his career. Um, That's right. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking about, I would say, one of the biggest current giants to ever grace the ring of both the WWE, WCW, wrestling, and if you want to call it, this is the only way to really say it, WWE, CW rings. Uh, We're here to talk about... A one Paul Donald White the second, aka the Big Show, aka the Giant. Uh, But before we get into that, of course, thanks for joining us on this episode. It is a one-on-one podcast with the Shant, and of course, yours truly, the Kamesh, the Advocate, Legal Advisor, Instagram Page Runner. I can come up with multiple titles, but we got a really big uh, show to. Huh? Give you guys, huh? Get it? Because huh? it's the name of the episode, and, and also the. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we digress. But of course, this episode is brought to you in part by both two sponsors. One, the Instagram Anything Wrestling Podcast One Instagram account. Hit that follow button. Like those pictures eventually. Body slam into those commentary sections. Let us know what you think. Uh, and we're also brought to you in part by... The new and improved, not really updated, WWE Network for a non-negotiable but very reasonable price of only $9.99. $9.99? It's not $10. It's not $1,000. And it's not... One. Million... Dollars. But... $9.99. $9.99. So yeah, um, the reason why uh, the Shant and I decided to take this time for this week's episode to talk about uh, the big show is because I don't know if you guys have caught it on the WWE Network most recently. For only nine ninety nine. His uh, what was it? it? Big Show Special. Yeah, like it didn't have a rebuilding have a, the Big Show. Yeah. is what it was called. There we go. Um, Nineteen minutes long, which was kind of. Off, if you consider like usually these documentaries are like an hour or fifty something. Like that. I think that's what a lot of people were expecting. Like they're probably like wondering, like, oh, we're gonna talk about his career, what he's done, what he's been through, what he's given us. Also, like why he's gone into surgery, what's supposed to um, happen in regards to the rest of his career, since currently he's considered an ambassador. Yeah. For the WWE. And I think for the Boys and Girls Club as well. Mm -hmm. I think he's one of the big um, ambassadors for that. But it got us to thinking because you were the first to see it. Um, We're not sure if Dan the Man saw it. Um, Which, by the way, he is back from vacation. But he is taking care of personal matters and issues. Um, Did you see it? I saw it. Okay. There is a lot of things that made me think about what was going on with him. I didn't know he was that badly injured or that he'd been hemorrhaging with this injury for, like, a while now throughout his life. And also, the whole retrospective of kind of putting himself in, like, Andre the Giant's shoes. Yeah. And that really made me think, like, wow, he's really has been taking into consideration his health, his livelihood. He, He wants to outlive the average lifespan of a giant. And that's hard to find nowadays. So, it really made me think, like, oh, you know, he's done so much in his career. He's been, like, you know, that big, dominant, strong powerhouse. Also, like you said earlier, like, that goofy, comedic comic relief, uh, playful giant that we get. But then also that big, bruising, one-punch dominating monster of a beast that... 
athletes like Kane and The Undertaker have like told them to bring out yeah. because that's who they really want to see dominate the WWE. And it made me think like how much more does he really have left? Like how much more does he want to do because he's only been, been technically if we're, if we're really going to say it two companies on. So he's been very loyal to where he's been. Yeah. And he's proven a lot. Like, let, let me go through this list of accolades. Yeah, go starting with WCW Wrestling. Wrestling. He is a two-time WCW World Heavyweight Champion. A three-time World Tag Team Champion with tag team partners Lex Luger. The Lex Express, I guess. Uh, Hulk Hogan 2.0. Sting, the icon. Woo! And of course, everyone's favorite bad guy, toothpick throwing, outsider himself. Hey, yo. Nick. Scott Hall. Uh, and he's been a uh, World War Three winner. Oh, that was a pay per view, right? Yeah. 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 In 96. Well, I think it's like, it's like a Survivor Series type of deal. So, yeah, World War Three was kind of considered like this. Survivor Series S match, but I think it took place in a cage. Okay. I think. They had a lot of wonky man- matches like that. But then some of them were pretty interesting. Like, as far as their perspective went. Of course, they went downhill later on trying to make their own hardcore championship. And oh, This is not about WCW. Monster truck match? Oh, God. But uh, we move on when he eventually decided to leave WCW for the WWF at the time. Um, I think this was back in 1999 at uh, St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Yep. When he made his big introduction. Um, This is the accolades he's accomplished since then. A two-time WWE champion. A ECW world champion. A two-time world heavyweight champion. Three-time hardcore champion. (laughs) One-time United States champion. One-time Intercontinental champion. Three-time WWE Tag Team Champion with the following. Uh, Chris Jericho, that was uh, Jericho. Jericho. Uh, with The Miz. Uh, mm-hmm. Miz Show. Miz Show, I think that's what it was. And then one time with uh, Kane. I think that was my favorite one yeah. with, as far as tag championships. Um, then he's a five-time World Tag Team Champion as far as WWF belt goes. Uh, with the following. Two times with... The Undertaker. Remember that? One time with Kane, uh, one time with Jericho, and one time with Miz. Well, I guess it's considered like two different... Because it was unified stories. at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he did win the Andre the Giant Memorial back in 2015. That is true. Um, I guess there was a bragging rights trophy uh, uh, with Team SmackDown. Which he betrayed. A tw- he's the 24th Triple Crown Champion... The twelfth Grand Slam champion. So basically, all we're really missing is a Royal Rumble win and a Money in the Bank win. Essentially, essentially. Um, because as far as he goes, there's no need to put the Universal Championship on him. Um, a Money in the Bank would. Well, we'll discuss as far as like if there were yeah. go down that yeah. road, but like I kind of would. Like to see if he would get a Royal Rumble win. At least put that accolade in there. Yeah. Or you can't bring this one back ever, which is kind of bugs me because I grew up with it. King of the Ring. Yeah. But as far as that goes, like like I said, his career started back in 99. Uh, what it, You said you started watching after 2001, which was WrestleMania 17. So yeah. you didn't really witness him enter in, but you caught up. With yeah. all that stuff. But yeah. where did you catch up on all that? On what network? Um, I, I don't know. Like, you paid a certain amount of money monthly yeah, for it? Yeah, just... It was in the single digits, but... Uh, nine ninety nine. I remember it wasn't $10, but it was... It was nine ninety nine. It was nine ninety nine. What's it called? Do you, do you remember? Well, I know the name network was in there. I'm just... I feel like it wasn't even a word. There were just three letters. WWE. Hmm... WWE Network. Oh, that makes right. sense. Yes. 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 Pay attention, people. 
But you you saw how he came in, how he was already like that was considered his first heel run. Yeah. Um, by the way, I caught up before there was a WWE network. It was YouTube 240 pixel videos back in the day. Um, yeah, I, I I got to catch up and see who the big show was. It took me a second to realize that holy crap, uh, the giant from WCW NWO Revenge is actually the big show. Um, yeah, yeah, like uh, let's talk about that for a second. You know, uh, Big Show has talked about this. Literally, his first match was with Hulk Hogan for the WCW Heavyweight Championship. So when you come into the wrestling business with that, with that, that's impressive. And like it, it's already being said, like, hey, you're not coming in as like an amateur guy. You're going in against the immortal. Yeah. So does. Of course, Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Like... Or Hollywood Hogan at the time. Like, for that to be thrown at you as far as, like, your first match, like, that says a lot, like, about the people that entrusted you to be a part of, you know, your company. Like, Eric Bischoff had good vision of what he wanted out of uh, Paul back in the day. And then... I think they looked at it as like a WrestleMania 3 esque type of deal because he was billed as Andre the Giant's son. Um... So I think that was like a, a good nod and kind of like a good, you know, uh, flashback to that. Um, but then Big Show went on record to say that, you know, uh, the company kind of got, uh, you know, infatuated and, you know, bulked up with this whole NW deal, you know, where you had seven limousines pull up and literally everybody was just part of NWO. It was taking up the whole show. And that's when you realize, okay, this ship, this ship, it hasn't sunk yet, but it's about to sink. Like it's like you sort of start feeling the water at yeah. your ankles. Yeah. And as soon as he realized that, like, from what I'm reading, he signed on to the WWE for ten years. I didn't know that's how big and massive of a contract Vince gave. Holy shit! If you think about it, signed for ten years, so that goes up to oh nine, and then here we are, ten years later from that. 2019. Mm-hmm. Wow. Two decades of big show. I mean, the fact that you come in, like, you came into um, the WWE, the first, like, rival you get is with its current biggest star, with Stone Cold Steve Austin. He wants to get, like, again, um, big show has had good introductions. So in WCW, it was with Hogan. When he came in WWE, he was in the midst of McMahon, Austin, Rock, Mick Foley. Like, he was just in there, you know, mixing it up with all those guys. So, not a bad introduction if, if you're the big show. And then, like, it's 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 like, for, like, that first part of it, you build them up as, like, you know, this enforcer, this dominant power that you have by your side. And then, of course, it starts going in, like, different directions, like. You put, remember the union? Yeah, with the two by fours? Like, you put him in that. Then, like, before that, you even put him in, in the corporate ministry. Like, yeah. and then what I, what I liked about that is that, like I said, you got out of the, the him was what the Undertaker wanted. Like, th- this is like Mark saying, like, hey, show you're a beast. Show you're a giant. Show everybody that. You know, you're here to dominate. Stop being such a little bitch. Funny little story. When Big Show was on Austin's podcast on the WWE Network for only $9.99, um, Big Show would talk about how when they were a tag team, Big Show would come across, he would come back through the curtain thinking, we did good. And he's like, Undertaker would be right there with that little, you know, bent finger of his. He would be like, come over here. And uh, he would kind of scold him and go, hey, when you did this, you should have done that. Or you should work on this or do this. Uh, but yeah, there's been uh, there's been stories out there. Uh, honestly, guys, go check out um, Big Show on a Steve Austin's podcast. That is one of my favorite episodes of the podcast, just because you learn so much about the Big Show, his hard times, his good times, um, and you learn that he's a very very humble guy. But continue. So you see, like things like that happening. I mean, eventually like you see him like becoming this more dominant guy but also he would become like your champion at one point even to the point where it's like he would get it <sighs> this is the one rivalry that it still makes me cringe just because of how like 
not because of what the horrible things that happened, but just it never felt right to me. Him and the uh, boss man. <laughs> Keep in mind that whole thing about his father dying at the time. His father had passed away yeah, way before. Yeah, he already passed away. And it's just like, uh, you're bringing something up that isn't necessary. Well, I like to think that they that they ask him. They're like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna go here. Are you okay? Uh, you know, like I'm sure, like for a guy like that, like to do everything he did, like hang off of a casket as it was being dragged away in a car, like hearing horrible poetry about your dead father. Like I'm sure the guy in his head is like, ah, whatever has to sell. Well, it was better than feeding Al Snow his own dog. <laughs> Poor guy. But I mean, like, you, you get it. Like, he, 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 in the beginning, like, obviously Vince comes up with these weird concepts and it's just like, all right, if you're willing to pull it off, you know, we don't have to go with it, but he was your guy. Yeah. And then, what was it? WrestleMania 2000? Which still is considered... Okay, what did you think of that match that he had? Like, honestly. He was in the hardcore match, right? No, that was... Oh, no, no, wait, wait, no. He was in the Fatal 4-Way. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is the Fatal 4-Way where everyone thought it was the worst, like, match of all time in WrestleMania history. Uh, I can point to a different WrestleMania for you people. Nine. Um, What, what, What match in particular was so bad? It has nothing to do with him. Uh, but you already know. Um, Don't watch that. If you do, it's only nine ninety nine. Um, but yeah, it was ironically because it's WrestleMania nine, so it's nine ninety nine. Really? Like, okay. <laughs> um, that match was eh. Um, bless you, Big Show. I don't think anybody was expecting Big Show to win. Um, not to say that he wouldn't have been a good champion, but. Um, Nah, the wrong guy won if you're asking me I think that was the Rock's time especially with Austin out of the picture um, yeah and he was the first one to get eliminated so it just showed like after that like where he was trying to go again with another gimmick of like being a face like you know being an entertainer being a Hollywood star and of course like Shane McMahon like really this is where you're going uh, and then the whole, which way did he go? Uh-huh, which way did he go? And it's just like, again, the guy is able to be loyal and do things that you would think no other guy would be, like, willing to do. Um, As I'm seeing here, uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. He came back like around the Royal Rumble in 2001. Yeah. yeah. The controversial year of did The Rock really win the Royal Rumble or not? Um, him trying to prove that he was worthy of another championship run, even though he ended up facing, uh, what was it, uh, Raven and Kane <laughs> at WrestleMania 17 for the hardcore title. Can we talk about that for a second? Let, let him tell you why he loves that match so much, by the way. So, this is, I watched this WrestleMania on VHS cassette. Um, and it, for those of you who don't know, that was like the bad version of a DVD or a Blu-ray from back in the day. Um, this was my first time seeing this event. It's what made me fall in love with wrestling. This match was the funniest match ever. Like, everything these guys were doing, I was just laughing and losing it. Like, I wasn't even concerned about, like, how hardcore it was or how brutal it was. I was just cracking up. I could have watched it now and just... It's a great crafted match, but just cracks me up every single time that I see it. Why does it crack you up? Just, like, their facial expressions or, like, freaking uh, Kane puts Raven's head through a wall. (laughs) It's so much gimmick, but yet so much action all at once. Like you, you, you want to turn away, but you don't want to turn away. You have this poor hundred twenty pound, hundred fifty pound, forty pound bastard Raven, and you got these two giants, <laughs> both over three hundred pounds, by the way, just destroying this poor guy. 
Which, by the way, the guy looked like he was wearing a dress, even though it was like a kilt. He almost got run over by that uh, that that caddy. That's scary. But around this time, like it just showed that you know, eventually he would be a part of Team WWE for the invasion angle. Yeah. Even though he was the first eliminated in the final match in Survivor Series. But in dominant fashion, yeah. he had like five finishers put on him. Which back in the day, if like your finisher was a finisher, it wasn't like the super kick where you just use it. People. Everyone on the roster. Yeah. And then, of course, like what. Couple like the following year, when we start the brand separation. Yeah, he was on SmackDown. Um, he was on Raw first, because eventually this came back. The failed attempt, and your boy literally kicked him out. Kicked him, literally. But it wasn't just, okay. You want to talk about that? Yeah. So. Vince and his angle of like, oh, Ric Flair is ruining the WWE for me. He is ruining what I've built, so I need to destroy it. I need to inject it with a poison. A poison so venomous that it strikes fear into the company that anyone runs. The NWO. God, no. It's a cleanse. And then, of course, like, after the brand split, you kind of reunite the original four of the NWO with Hollywood, uh, with Nash, Hall, uh, and the Big Show. Obviously, was X Pac there? X Pac was there. Booker T was in there. <laughs> Shawn Michaels was there. You can already see by us mentioning the names of who they were trying to put into it, how bad it was going to go. Do you think. I guess I'm taking a survey here. Hey, yeah. Um, Do you think that was another one of Vince's attempts of, let me take something that was not originally created by me and let's make a 2.0 out of it and try to make it better than the original? Yeah. Because that's what it seems like. It's like, let's bring back the NWO and let's, let's make it better. But... It just, it fell apart. Like, Booker T's in one second, then they kick him out. Big Show's in one second, then they kick him out. Kevin Nash tears his quad. He's out. Scott Hall had uh, problems at the time. He's out. Shawn Michaels goes to feuding with Triple H in a very great comeback SummerSlam match. So it, it just, it fell apart. You like, know? everything was going well, but benefit some people, but would really just devastate others yeah and it just seemed like what's the angle that we're having with the big show at this point yeah i mean what eventually at that point you put him to smackdown because he needed somebody to face and if there's no nwo to run rampant yeah you know but i will say this big show kind of became a a locker room and a, a smackdown leader at that point like we talked about this before when you think of 02 205 like smackdown dominant roster like Leadership, there was Stevie Richards, there was Undertaker, there was Eddie Guerrero, Kurt Angle, Edge, Big Show. These guys were like, they were like SmackDown blue and white pride, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, moving forward. I mean, you move them over to SmackDown, like, you have them have various feuds with like Brock Lesnar, Eddie Guerrero, Undertaker, John, John Cena, Undertaker. Like, you start showing that this is who we've had. This is the monster everyone has been wanting to see. This dominant, brute, beast of a man just destroying your roster. But, but uh, with comedic moments yeah. slapped into it. Every now and then. But of course, you would see those angles like, oh, he's a champion. He's a SmackDown champion. He's, he's a tag champ. Like, he proved his worth. Yeah. I mean, to sign the guy for 10 years, like, at that point, it's just like... You know, how, how much more can you get out of him? Yeah. And for the guy to be so loyal not to go to, like, uh, what was it, Ring of Honor at the time? Um, TNA? Were they hiring? Were, no, they were pretty full, apparently. Um, I'm trying to see some of the highlights of his career at this point. For um, So... He entered a rivalry with uh, JBL. 
Huh? Uh, what was it? The oh, the steel cage match in all four. Barbed wire cage match. Barbed wire cage match. Yeah. And then WrestleMania 21. The big sumo match. What was the point of that? I think just like promotion, like. And who else could pull it off? To pull a, a, a single match off like that. And, like, he, like, was really into it. Like, full gear, you know, everything. Like, this is your guy who does so many face heel turns at this point that it's like, you tell him to do a gimmick, he'll do it. If it benefits everybody, if it benefits the company. Like, he's your company guy. Yeah. And then, in 05, my favorite tag run of his... Uh, with uh, with Kane. Now that made sense. It's kind of like seeing Undertaker Big Show again. Yeah. But I think I felt with these two, it was more dominant. Okay. Just because like Kane was in the, in this, he was unmasked finally. He he showed how much of a demon he really is. Yes. And then you have like this big powerhouse next to him. Who isn't doing a gimmick anymore. He's not being play forward. And he's being the big show. Yeah. And to put the tag belts on them for a while. That was pretty impressive. Until they lost the spirit squad. The fact that five guys. Including Dolph Ziggler being one of those five. Was able to lift him up. The way they did to slam him back that's down. That's scary. Yeah that's scary. It's but that's. What he weighed at that time five hundred pounds. So that's a hundred pounds essentially for each person. Yeah, but these guys obviously bench press more than that. Yeah, but to combine them all, like to lift them up like a feather, that was just scary. Um, I mean, eventually at this point, like what in the end of '06, when for some reason we had to have. WWECW. Wasn't that something? What did you think when Rob Van Dam was the ECW champion and then Big Show just takes the belt from him? Well, we all know the backstory to why. Um, Sorry, Rob. <laughs> uh, uh, now, do you think Big Show was the right fit for the ECW championship? I think he was a guy that, once again, you said it before, it's like, hey, we need someone that we can count on. We need a company guy. Who do we have? We have the big show. Because this was the same time that, what, they were asking Stevie Richards, Kurt Angle, and a couple other guys, like, hey, we need to fill this roster yeah. with veterans that are going to run this. Right. Like, they ran SmackDown or they ran Raw. And elevate the new talent. Yeah. Obviously... Kurt wasn't happy because he took a really big pay cut. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we all know what Stevie situation. <sighs> did you did you see that Paul Heyman segment where he addressed that? No. Okay, we're gonna watch that. All right. Um, and then of course the Big Show again, your company guy. Hey, I'll do it. Pay cut, no problem. Work for the company still, you got it. And look, you can crap all over WWE, CW, but there were some matches in there where he got busted open, put through thumbtacks, put through tables, got hit with steel chair shots to the head. So he was still like, he was still doing stuff. He wasn't. Yeah, and he was using uh, in the other brands as well he, while still being the ECW guy. Remember that Hell in a Cell match? With DX? Where they shove. Uh, the match before it, though, the Great American Bash with The Undertaker. The Punjabi prison match. That was a cluster. I think, like, five people got injured, so they had to, like, shift people around. And even The Undertaker was like, what is the point of this if the guy who I'm supposed to wrestle isn't wrestling in his own match? But that just that to me that says a lot about the big show that he's willing to be He'll participate do it. and also be the first to do it. Yeah. Cause ah, God, I remember watching that 
I was just like, what kind of clusterfuck of a match is this? Yeah. And the whole situation behind it, I was just like, what are we doing here? I think it was a desperate attempt of, look, we, we advertised the match. Like, how, how can we still give the match without giving the original match that we, you know, had promotions for or that we advertised for? So, Heck, I am, the one match before, like, I guess he took a break uh, was the uh, Elimination Chamber, the hardcore Elimination Chamber. Match. That was also... <laughs> What did you think? This is what I thought of it. Honestly, like, I love the idea and the concept that you make it, of course, violent for December to dismember. It was still pretty bad. Story-wise. This is back when I was uh, in my teen years and I would cheer for the good guys and boo the bad guys. Before you grew up and realized bad guys are worth cheering for, too. (laughs) Particular ones. Particular ones. Um, of course, you had Big Show defeated by Bobby. Um, Bobby. Even though Paul Heyman was uh, in a big conflict with Mr. McMahon about, hey, we got to push this other guy, CM Punk, over here. Oh, no, he's an indie wrestling darling. We're not going like, to push him. No, he's your guy. And you also have another guy you need to push in Bobby. Hello. Like it's that that's one thing I kind of didn't like. Like if we could take a little sidetrack from Big Show real quick. Do you think Bobby deserved a push for a regular heavyweight championship and not the ECW championship? I think he deserved a regular one. Yeah. I wouldn't mind if that Great American Bash 07 if he beat Cena or he was supposed to win. <laughs> or even before that one Sean was supposed to win. Yes, there's a lot of things to discuss about that in future episodes. But, <laughs> Sam I'm Shant, the man, and I'm cool. <coughs> Sam I am the Shant, and I am. I'll never be cool. I'm sorry. One, you should have had one more run. You should have. You, the guy retired in 2010. Well, no, he came back for Crown Jewel, but he should have had that one more title run. But he didn't because he was too busy burying him. And he's talking for my guy, by the way. But moving forward. So I guess like at that point he really did take a couple injuries. I think this is when the injury train started plaguing the big show a lot. Well, keep in mind there was also the Stevie Richards thing that happened around this time. So they were stepping back on, hey, we got to be careful on what we do and what we don't do. So we said that his contract in '99 was a 10-year contract, but because of injuries, it kind of expired a little early in '07. Really? Wow. Um, but of course, you know, the way things work out, he finds a way to sign a new deal. We get him back in what, 08? So we hadn't seen him for almost a year. Yeah. And that's when the buildup of interpromotional sports started happening again. And of course, who's your guy to do it? Big show. But it had to be against one of... In my personal opinion, boxing's greatest annoyance, Floyd Money Mayweather. So here's the thing that I didn't like about that. Like, Rey Mysterio just had a grueling match against Edge, where Edge damn near could have killed him. And the Big Show comes out like, oh, cool, I haven't seen him in a while. He's, he looks, he that's when he started taking his health serious. He lost, what, 30, 40 pounds? He was no sixty pounds. He was looking fit a little more, yeah, um, a little leaner, a little stronger, and he was trying to promote himself as a face. Like, hey, I'm back. You know, I'm here to become a champion. It doesn't matter what brand, what belt. I'm here for a championship run. And then, of course, the heel turned right after to destroy Rey Mysterio in front of Mayweather. Which is the build-up for WrestleMania 24. Yep. I did not like that match. Not because it was Mayweather, but I just thought it was like... We've done this before where we get athletes from different sports competing against WWE's biggest guys at the yeah. time. Like We saw it with Lawrence Taylor versus Bam Bam, 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 Bam Bigelow. Bigelow. We're seeing it now with Mayweather versus... Uh, Big Show. Big Show. Obvious size difference. 
Of course, Mayweather is an undefeated heavyweight champion in boxing, well respected. Still is, right? He's retired. But he's undefeated. Yeah, I think he's 50 and 0. Um, and then you have the Big Show, who lately, at that point, started util- utilizing the power of the punch. Loved it. And what? I think Mayweather got the win, right? Yeah. Like, what did you think of that? Because honestly, I was just like. It's a match that's filled with theatrics, inevitably. Uh, me being a WWE guy, I was cheering for Big Show to win. Uh, when he didn't, I'm like, Big Show, stop putting people over. Especially at WrestleMania, seriously. Like, my, my thoughts on that is, like, I didn't see that WrestleMania, but I knew that Mayweather was involved. I was not, I've never really been a big fan of Money Mayweather myself just because of his antics and how stupid he is. But well, when I saw it, when I finally saw it on the WWE Network for nine ninety nine, I thought, wow, you are still, no matter what, the company guy. You're still willing to do whatever is asked of you. Yep. And you never complain. I would have been annoyed as shit to, like, do that. But that's just me. Um, And then we're getting, what, this constant face-heel, face-heel thing with him. Yeah. But then we're renewing a rivalry that I kind of liked. Big Show and Undertaker. Yeah. What, they had, what, two good matches? Like a regular match that ended quickly because of the power of the punch. Yeah. And then a last man standing match. There was a casket match in there, too. I think, yeah. Yeah. But it showed, like, hey, like, you know... He's really ready to prove that, like, he wants a, a real championship run. Oh, God. Focus. Sorry. By the way, we always have something of the WWE playing in the background. Oh, you really have to focus. I'm, you know what? I'm going to pause this part. I'm, I'm all right. I'm you all right. sure? Yes, I'm all right. All right. Um, so, in 2009, he's drafted back to Raw. He's off SmackDown. Um, I think this is where that tag team thing kind of started going. Jared's Jericho, show yeah. and Miz's show and all that. Mm-hmm. So he started proving that he was a uh, a tag champ. That he can coexist with other people to be tag champ. Whether it's veterans or new guys. Yeah. Like, I think my favorite team up was with Jericho when they were Jericho. show. Teaming with uh, or feuding against DX. Mm-hmm. Uh, they even had like a match with uh, Straight Edge Society. <laughs> oh, Punk and Gallows, how I miss you guys. Wasn't that something? And then at this point in his career, you know, he's being a tag champ, he's cooperating, but he wants more championships. Worthiness. Yeah. He wants to be a heavyweight champion. I mean, isn't that what everybody strives to be at one point when they're in the WWE or anything that they're involved in? You want to be the company guy. You want to be the guy who wants to hold the belt. Um, I think you're more familiar with this part of his career. Yeah. uh, And this is what kind of will inspire the second half of this episode. I felt like in 2011, Big Show had kind of... He was kind of, once again, in the middle of that face-heel, face-heel thing. But uh, he had fully, you know, um, empowered, you know, the WMD. um, You know, dominant force. Uh, He was doing things that really, like, still established him as, like, the giant. Um, He put Mark Henry over in that Hall of Pain storyline. Uh, where he would he would always play like the victim who would get beat up or would get his leg broken or whatever. Um, and then you fast forward to 2012 where he finally gets the Intercontinental Championship from Cody. Uh, gets a, a, a memorable WrestleMania win. Um, but then later on that year is when once again when he turned heel, he became World Heavyweight Champion against Sheamus in convincing fashion. Um, I liked it. I really, really did. Uh, I don't know. What did you think? I mean, at that point, it was like, okay, you've earned the right to be champion, even if you get the workhorse 
Tyler. But that also completes, like, in full circle, being a triple crown champion. Yeah. Because you've earned every belt but this one. You gave us a good rivalry with both Mark Henry and Cody. You're still being the company guy, but you're being the guy who deserves to be a champion. Yes. I mean, granted that, like, sometimes, like, you either had kayfabe injuries or legitimate injuries that are ailing you. I liked every run he had at that point because it's just showing that, like, you guys still trust the guy. He's still, like, helping bring in these new guys in. Like, of course, like, do the right thing and give them, you know, their opportunities, you know, take the fall. At this point, like, I- I'm seeing, like, the big show as, like, all right, he's your guy to go to if you need something in regards to, like, a big, like, opportunity. Yeah. And not just because of size, by the way, but just because, like, overall, like, he's your guy to trust. Yeah. This is one thing that I felt weird about, maybe because I was in the midst of, like, still watching, not watching as much as the authority angle. That was weird. And what was the whole gist of it or the point of it because I, I at the time when I was seeing it it's like you're kayfabe getting fired but you're not you're being emotional when this is not how I know you as you know yeah um story plays out that this is in the midst of when Daniel Bryan was emerging and kind of becoming the guy uh they kind of you know established Big Show as being buds with Daniel Bryan and then authority kind of putting their foot down as like, you're going to do what we tell you to do or else you're fired. Um, and this led to Big Show sometimes just, you know, standing at ringside while Daniel Bryan gets beat up and he's not able to do anything because Triple H tells him, if you move, you're fired. Um, he gets fired. He he comes back um, as a unemployed, or as unemployed, costs the shield, the, the tag titles, um... And then at Survivor Series, when he's facing against the Authority, sells out, punches Cena in the face, and teams up with the Authority. Which, again, kind of goes back to like the whole John Laurinaitis thing. This guy made you get on your knees, he made you cry, but then you punch Cena in the face, you cost him the match, and you keep this guy in power. Like, that's where some of this stuff just didn't make sense. I'm like, I don't get it. Like, you do one thing, and then you, like, paradox it the, the, the next night, you know? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Um, from there, Big Show went to being in the authority to just, he, like, he's just there. Like, he's standing there becoming, like, the giant of the group. Um, and then slowly after that, he kind of fizzled out into being in the part-time schedule and then kind of being your, just your one guy who kind of appears here and there, puts over a Braun Strowman, then kind of goes away for a minute, um, and then came back for the New Day, um, betrayed them. Uh, was with the bar, but then due to injuries, had to go away for a while. And this is when injuries really started, like, plugging in, like, yep. hip injuries, uh, hamstring injuries. Um, so here's the thing, like, how old is he? He's a 47-year-old man. Wow. He's seven feet tall. I think this is before the massive weight loss. He was like at what, 440, 441? Always build at that. He, before all this, like, I'm a dominant monster, like, I'm like someone no one messes with, he's still a man. Yeah. A man who has been loyal to his company for years, for decades, but never taking personal time to really recover from everything that's asked of him. Yeah. Like, if you think about it, if you ever watch most of his matches, sometimes some of his opponents go for, like, blood. They go for, like, real devastating uh, moves to, like, slow him down or to stop him. And there's only so much a guy can take when getting hit in the head with his chair or... Or with steel steps, whether it's to, like, his shoulders, his knees, his ankles, his hip, like, whatever. It doesn't matter where. Yeah. Like, I get it. You have to slow a guy down. But the guy is, like, really, like, dealing with a lot. 
And you know, they would always say in wrestling, like the best way to uh, overcome a giant is, is to chop them down to size. If you notice, they would always focus on the legs because you're chopping down a giant. So when you guys, when you have years of guys coming at your legs, coming at your legs, coming at your legs, eventually, you know. It's going to wear. Yeah. It's going to prove that like even as big a guy as he is, like you can't deal with that. So, from what I'm reading, um, where is it? Like, I'm trying to, like, see, like, what he's had to deal with as far as, like, uh, injuries. I know that there was also the, the Braun Strowman steel cage match where he took a power slam, tumbled, because that part of the cage, you know, crashed down. And so he takes like this nasty tumble where his body literally bounces off, you know, the fence and then comes back down on it. And he got injured because of that as well. Didn't Strowman like suplex him? Broke Not the suplex ring. him, but like, what do you call it? Power slam. Power slam. Yeah. And they both destroyed the ring. Like even that has to do a lot with like how bad of a back injury or a hip injury you can take. And keep in mind, this guy is like no longer, you know. 20, 30 years old. Like, he, he's in his 40s now, late 40s, going on to his 50s. Um, but, I mean, so he, so that's where we are with the big show right now. And this is where I want to introduce the second half of this episode. So, big show, after losing that immense amount of weight, I always felt like, you know what, this guy needs to, ha- needs to have one more run. Whether that's as, you know, the, the, the dominant gentle giant or just the nasty giant that's going to take out everybody in his path. I always felt like with this new weight loss that, you know what, Big Show deserves it. Like, he's one of those guys where he deserves one last run. Here's the thing. What caused his weight loss? What, what, what finally clicked in his head like, I need to lose the weight. I need to take care of myself. That conversation with John Cena. Other than that, he had, he looked into his life like, hey, I, I cannot not be here. Like he wanted to outlive Andre the Giant. Yeah, and that and that's been the one thing that a lot of people, as far as like I said, bigger than six feet five, aren't able to do sometimes, just because it's like very hard. Like he's barely outlived him by a year. Andre died at forty six. Big Show's forty seven. But obviously, Big Show in his 40s has been in better shape. He's been able to take care of himself. And now with the surgeries, like you're seeing, like he's serious. Yeah. Um, Even a big guy like that can be scared of life. And I mean, you see this guy, you think, oh, he's he's just some big wrestling guy. He, he, He... why should he matter? So you can't tell me anywhere you've seen the big show you don't recognize who the hell he is at yeah. this point. And I always hear this when I rewatch like things on the past of the WWE where Jim Ross is always like, Oh, you know, it's one thing to see him on TV, it's another when you're really looking at how big of a massive man this guy really is. You're like an accolade of life to see in person wearing a size 18 5e boot 5 6e boot you know 80 like what 70 inch uh jacket size yeah like, you want to think like oh this guy has been so out here so long and he's trying to outlive everything but you know is this guy taking care of himself yeah and the way i would want like, all right, if we can go into it to the WWE now, like, this is what I would personally want. Kind of like the thing I'm hoping for with Nia when she yeah. comes back. You don't have to talk. You don't have to speak, like, these long promos or anything. Hell, if you don't speak at all. Yeah. You just come back out of nowhere. Rain, hellfire, and terror destroy everyone in your path and whether it's for if it's let's just say current champions yeah whether it's Brock uh, which we don't want or whether it's Kofi yeah. you show what he wants yeah 
And you keep bringing him in as this heel, this nasty, dominant guy that's just just ready to wreak havoc. Yeah. Obviously, because there's no glory behind the Universal Championship belt anymore. But there's a lot in the WWE Championship belt. Yeah. Not to take anything away from Randy, but I think to see Kofi versus Big Show... Like, if you really want to test how good Kofi's been, obviously he's bringing in full circle something with Randy Orton, but this would be, like, a true test of, like, if you're a winning champion. Get the biggest, strongest accolade in front of you and see how well you really can do because a lot of people have done that. Shawn Michaels has done it. Shawn Cena's done it. Cena's done it, but he had to use a shovel at the same time to do it. Uh, I don't. That that's how I would book it. Like I, I I don't know if you at one point would want him as a face. But it just doesn't show it because I wouldn't believe it if he was a face. Like yeah, you know I'm back. I want another championship run. It's like you try this in 08 and you turned heel like twenty minute, twenty seconds later. I would do a face turn, but at the very last minute when you get sympathy for him. So the way that I would book him is, let's just say after a SummerSlam, Big Show comes back. New attitude. He's not going to talk. He's not going to explain why he's you know beating up so-and-so. Put him on this tirade. Have him feud with, hopefully if he comes back in time, Lars Sullivan, Samoa Joe, Braun Strowman. He can just be on this thing where he's taking on all these giants of the WWE. I think they're the newest giant of the WWE. Yeah. Like, have him rebuild his name. Yeah. Like, hey, you guys can do your thing, but remember, I'm the original giant of this company. Um, I would even put a title on him. I wouldn't even mind if it's the Universal Championship. Because it's like you said, yeah, that title has had no prestige. And what's one one good way to put prestige back onto that title? Put it on someone who we're all very well acquainted with and give him a dominant run. I would give him like this immense run where he just he's wreaking havoc. And I don't want to do, you know, uh, the thing of like, oh, he's going to take a count out victory. He's going to take a disqualification mm-hmm. victory. Everything is gonna get settled like either one, two, three, or he's gonna tap you out. One of the two. He's not he's not there to do shenanigans, he's not there to, you know, jerk around. Um and then I would <laughs> I would maybe build up to um a big show versus Cesaro match. <laughs> Cause of course you can't not have Cesaro get a belt right now. Or I would I would put him against someone where if they beat Big Show, it's believable because you gotta keep in mind if Big Show goes on this run, you need someone to beat him that's gonna make it look convincing. Not gimmicky of like, oh, let me knock the ref down, use, you know, a couple of chair shots, hit it about four or five finishers and that'll finish him off. You want a definitive win. And at the very last minute of that match where you feel like you know, Big Show needs some sympathy. The guy's beating the heck out of him. That's where you can maybe pull a double turn. He loses the championship, but becomes face in the process and retires. Walks into the sunset. Um, that's what I would want. I would want one more dominant run out of the Big Show. If you don't want to put the title on him, fine. But give him a memorable run where it's like it's wreaking havoc. Have it be in steel cage matches, you know, hardcore matches falls count anywhere matches like give this guy like a brutal run let him be Mm -hmm. remembered as you know what he kind of fidgeted around there with being a face a heel being gimmicky comedic but at the end of the day that's that's the that's freaking big show you know so those are just my sentiments about it i mean the guy has earned a lot throughout his career the guy has done a lot yeah and Never once has he, like I've been saying, been the guy to just, oh, I don't want to do this. Or, no, I'm not going to do this because it makes me look dumb or makes me look bad. He's always been your yes guy. He's been your guy. Why not give him one last run? Like, I get it that you're trying to push for the newest generation of superstars and athletes. But you have to remind the world sometimes, like, hey, these guys who've been here or are still here can still do it. Yes. Don't let weight, age, or injuries stop you. Yeah. 
Um, hopefully we get that. I mean, it's it'd be a great thing to see. Yes. Um, but yeah, I I just hope he gets one more run. Any more closing remarks before we wrap up the episode? Um, just the matter, like I said. I've always been a fan of, of a, any superstar that comes in that proves their worth, that wants to do something with the company as long as possible. But when you get a guy like this who not only takes pride in what he does, but also is your guy that will do anything, he deserves everything that should come his way as far as, like, good happens to be. And I hope, make sure you get that one last memorable run. And without question, future WWE Hall of Famer. Oh, yeah. Without that question. For, first ballot entry. Yeah. Like, not even, like, a hesitation. Like, if he were to say, like, I'm hanging it up right now, I'd have nominated him for 2020 immediately. Main candidate. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, fair to say that we both respect the big show. We both love the big show. Uh, the guy has come a long way. We're both looking for that one last run, especially with that immense amount of weight loss. You want to see the big show at his best. Um, oh, do not. Do not. I know they're notorious for gimmicks. Do not put them up with uh, Shaq. It's been teased so many times. If you didn't pull the trigger in 09, let it go, man. Fun facts. I think Big Show said that's one of the reasons why he also lost weight. He wanted to get ready for that Shaq match, which for a minute seemed like it was going to happen, but then just fizzled out. I think what? Shaq pulled out? Or something? Uh, Some, something happened where yeah. it, it just... Nah, we're not doing it now. They kind of had it with uh, WrestleMania 32, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royale. They were both in there, but then everybody just ganged up on them and just threw them out. So it's like, we got it, but not really. Um, That's then, why I wouldn't want it to be brought back. But just remember, Baron Corbin won that match. Um, <sighs> sorry. Uh, so, yeah. Uh... We just reviewed uh, Big Show's career, talked about how we would want him to have one last run, and no doubt, future WWE Hall of Famer for sure, without question. Uh, Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. Thank you so much for listening, and we will see you all next time.